catch it from round three. Watch the right hand. Boom. And that is a sucker right hand. I mean, that was telegraphed by Marlon Sterling, and it still got home, Chris. Right, and as we checked in the corner of Breland, the punch did not shake him up. Stung him in the ear, however. That's Breland on the left at 146. Same weight for his opponent. Been no knockdowns. Neither fighter marked. We're in the fourth round schedule for 15. Freeland's first defense. Good one-two by Mark Wonder. Freeland. The right hand and finish with the left. The thing that you like about that, Chris, is he's not looking for the one punch. He's not just trying to take him out with his right hand. He's putting punches together. And Joey Ferriello, his trainer, during uh, the rest period, told him not to try that one knockout punch. In fact, Breland now fighting a lot like Evander Holyfield, the junior heavyweight champion who is in the audience, along with Mike Tyson watching this bout. There's the jab, doubling up on it. And there's that body shot. That body shot is dangerous because it leaves Mark totally open. He has to bring his arm so far down because of his height. And again, Breland on the deck. And we'll see if Perez takes the point away. Tony Perez now. Cleaning the gloves nope. as he should. Tony did not feel that that was much, as much of a throwdown as the two previous incidents. What I was saying was when Mark throws that right to the body or the left hook, he has to bring his hand so far down because Starling is so short and he's so tall that he leaves himself wide open. Grilling with the quick hand, Cobra-like, in his approach to this sport. Coast him a little bit right here. First time he's done that. Exactly, Chris. Mark, Mark was not covering up when they came out of that little clinch. He's got to protect himself at all times. Another. And you saw the Starling jab get home. He told us yesterday he could out-jab Mark Freeland. I think he can only do that if he slips Mark's jab and then lands his own. Desire on the part of the champion. Savviness on the part of the challenger on the right. Marlon Starling. Popular Hartford, Connecticut boxer. Okay, break. Last champion, as a matter of fact, in that state was the great Willie Pepper. World champion. Ross well, Starling trying to cross that left jab with a missed right. Round four, about the end. Columbia, South Carolina. We have had no knockdowns. Neither fighter marked. Freeland in the blue trunks. Six, two and a half. Uh, shorter at five, eight. That is the challenger on the right and red. Marlon Starling. The World WBA welterweight championship out. Freeland's first defense. Freeland has been wrestled to the canvas. Three times. for Breland are the sneaky punches of the man that just landed to the midsection. Starling in red. It's a, his style is so confusing, dumbfounding. 
We'd like to remind our local stations that at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. That one, uh, eye on the shoulder, actually caught the shoulder blades in the back. There was an uppercut just missed by Breland that would have ended it all. That uppercut is the weapon, I think, in this bout. Mark got the best of that exchange, but again, he did not cover at the end of it, and, no. and Starling scored the last punch of the exchange. The thing you have to like here is that even though he's been clipped, especially with that punch near the end of round three, Mark Breland is still putting punches together, still trying things, Chris. Great retaliation, great retaliation by Starling. ABC's Wide World of Sports featuring the WBA World Welterweight Championship. Okay, give it a we'll continue after this word from our local station. This World Championship fight has gone now to the sixth round, scheduled for 15. The champion Breland in blue on the left. Marlon Starling, 45 fights, 41 wins, 25 knockouts. The challenger and a very worthy contender. Man with a frustrating career. Breland trying to cover up as he bent over there, not for the effect of a punch. Tony Perez, the referee. Three judges scoring a 10-point must WBA rule. You talked about the patience required of Mark Breland because of the defensive skill of Marlon Starling, Chris. Right now, he's being a little bit more patient, taking his time a little bit. Now Marlon's complaining, he's holding me. He also shouldered Marlon Starling there. Starlin likes to be disruptive, whether it's moving, punching, talking to his opponent, or to the referee. Now, it's a difficult one to yeah, judge. I think very Tony, difficult. He's taking the oh, point away. God. That was very borderline, Chris. Freeland with he had long his elbow legs. Up. Yeah, he had his elbow up in Mark's face. He was putting it on him, but Mark had been trying to put it on him, too. That, I think, was one of the least offensive of his offenses in that uh, But when you box... Area. Defend yourself at all times. This is what I'm trying to get to. Breland is not the most graceful guy on his pen. Again, Starling complaining to Perez. So now Breland taking backward steps more than earlier. totally set for heavy punches earlier. Let's see him move a little bit. Move, but, but keep himself on balance and in a position to punch, to set himself to let his punches go. If he's moving all the time, he just has no power. Do like his fellow medal winner, Holyfield, who's watching. And his friend from Brooklyn, Mike Tyson, who's also yeah. here in Columbia right. today. Right, they're about four seats apart. Someday they may meet. But we have a good enforcer here, ex-Dallas uh, Cowboy tackle Harvey Martin. He's bigger than both of them. He's sitting next to Harvey. Yeah. Denver Nugget forward Alex English. A lot of very talented athletes watching two very talented athletes in the ring today. Again, Breland with the shoulder and the elbow. And there, as he threw that lead right hand, he had his left, down, left hand down by his cup, and he got caught with a right hand by Starling. Like all of us, Breland does not like to get hit from the solar plexus. He'll get a rest in around six, four seconds. 